For Comedy Hype News, it's your boy k Rock. The 1990s was probably the most pivotal decade in Eddie Murphy's career. He'd grown into a proper adult, moving away from the fast-talking Brooklyn youth roles that he used to make a name for himself. After the release of Trading Places in 1983, Murphy reportedly signed a $15 million contract with Paramount Pictures, which would include the release of five movies, all starring Murphy. In 1987, he re-upped the contract for another five movies. Murphy's relationship with Paramount would continue until the mid-1990s. Around that time, Murphy was given a script that would turn out to be The Netty Professor. However, because the film belonged to Universal Pictures, Murphy realized that he would have to put out one final film through Paramount in order to fulfill his contract obligations. Thus came Vampire in Brooklyn. Eddie came up with the story for Vampire in Brooklyn along with his brother, Charlie Murphy and Vernon Lynch. The script was written by Charlie, Michael Lucker, and Chris Parker. Charlie intended the movie to be a straight horror with no laughs and Eddie Murphy's character would have no redeeming qualities. Unfortunately, a horror film is exactly what took place behind the scenes. When a stunt woman fell to her death, holding Paramount Pictures, the director of the film, Eddie Murphy Productions, and Eddie Murphy himself, liable. Comedian Crime Files presents The Death of a Stunt Woman on Vampire in Brooklyn. 32-year-old Sonya Davis was one of a few black stunt women in Hollywood at the time, which gave her the luxury of a constant work in the industry where certainty is unheard of. Because of that, she worked on some great films with amazing actresses, including Whoopi Goldberg, Janet Jackson, and Angela Bassett. Davis's career began in 1992, doing stunt work for the film Deep Cover, starring Lawrence Fishburne. From there, she spent some time acting in two 1993 episodes of In Living Color before returning to stunt work for Class Act, Black Man, and A Low Down Dirty Shade. Davis was only in the industry five years prior to the fatal stunt, but her reputation was an astute professional, was already established. One of her colleagues, Bob Miner, said this about her. She was pretty green when she started, but she quickly moved up through the ranks to distinguish herself. She was very much a professional. Unfortunately, that professionalism wasn't enough to save her life. Stunt work isn't something one trains for. There aren't any formal qualifications that limit the barrier to entry beside natural athleticism. Davis met the prerequisite, having worked as an acrobatic instructor and nutritionist. Five years before, she met a group of stuntmen who invited her to their rehearsals. Davis quickly fell into love with the fast-paced lifestyle and the high-risk involvement that came with being a stuntwoman. Before entering the business and basically received on-the-job training from fellow stuntmen and stuntwomen. When Miner said she quickly moved up the ranks, he meant she took on more risks to stand out from her peers. That approach caught up with her though. The stunt that ultimately killed her was a 42 foot jump. She was hesitant to execute. Her mother, Wanda Sapp, described the moments leading up to the event in a Los Angeles Times interview. The last words I heard my baby say was when she yelled down to the stunt coordinator, are you sure? I could feel Sonya wasn't comfortable with the stunt. She asked them three times if they were sure it was okay. I could feel her lack of confidence, and then she paused. Davis jumped backwards into an airbag that was supposed to cushion her fall. Instead, it acted like a trampoline and launched her into the side of the building, and she fell to the pavement. Adding insult to injury, Davis' brother was on set with their mother and filmed the fall. Cinematographer Mike Irwin recalled the event when he participated in the oral history on the movie. Sonya had to drop into the alley from the top of the building. The space between the buildings was 12 feet across, and the airbag was 12 feet. The airbag was as big as a house. It filled the alley entirely. That's why there was no ambulance on set. There was an ambulance the first night, but not the second, because the airbag was so big. There was no way she could miss it, unless she did the stunt wrong. Sonya had done all the moves. She was aware of the scene, leading up to the fall. She was hanging on the side of the building, or it was supposed to look like that. She had something underneath her. Before the fall, the stunt coordinator said, don't push off, just relax and fall back naturally. Well, she didn't relax. She pushed so hard that her head hit the opposing brick wall and she fell only the tips of her toes touched the airbag. The rest of her body hit the pavement. She landed at my feet. Davis was not killed immediately, suffering severe injuries, which led to a 13 day coma before she died. Davis's family filed a $10 million civil suit against director Wes Craven, Eddie Murphy, Eddie Murphy Productions, Paramount, and the stud coordinator, Alan Alini. Sapp alleged that her daughter had been pressured into doing a stunt that was unsafe 
and expressed her doubts before she went through with it. They also cited that the stunt coordinator acted recklessly with gross negligence by directing Davis to jump without a safety life while renting an airbag that was improperly placed. Sapp claims that she attempted to get Davis to carry a St. Jude medal with her while jumping, but she declined. According to Sapp, Davis said, she said, Mama, I don't need it because I have the Lord in my heart. Unfortunately for Davis, the family lawyer, Melvin Belly, passed away unexpectedly while the case was still in progress. Shockingly, there is no information about the case after that, with many assuming it was dropped. The California Occupational Health and Safety Administration investigated the incident and found the airbag was too small and properly positioned for the stunt, resulting in four citations and a $29,000 fine against Paramount Studios. Davis was acting as Angela Bass's stunt woman at the time of her death. The two had previously worked together on Strange Days and What's Love Got to Do With It. Bassett released a statement through her publicist, which read, She was a dedicated artist. Her work was extremely important to her. But first and foremost, she was a woman of God, and I love and miss her dearly. Veterans in the industry have a frontiersman attitude about their job. They accept stunt work as inherently dangerous, and they lay burdens of final judgment of safety at the foot of the performer. Everyone knows the risk they assume when they take a gig. The LA Times described the most successful in the business as the ones who plot each stunt with the care and precision of a carpenter. In the same piece, retired stuntman John Epstein said, you have to be willing to pack up and leave if the director pushes you too far. If you're banking on this one job and you live for this one day of work, you're going to have a hard time. At the same time, some stuntmen and women struggle to find work after being labeled as a coward or unreliable. Davis didn't have that issue though. It seemed as though pride got the best of her after she was replaced on the aforementioned Strange Days for failing to execute a car stunt. Davis's mentor, Dennis Roberts, said being replaced hurt her pride. She said, no one else will ever do that to me. Determined as Davis was, the four-story fall still made her nervous. Roberts claimed Davis initially turned down the offer, but accepted it when the studio offered more money. Surely the bump in pay wasn't worth her life. Even after the investigation of California State Regulator of the film industry found Paramount at fault, the Los Angeles County District Attorney choose not to pursue criminal negligence or charges against the studio or anyone involved with the film. The last DA to do that in LA County, Leah D'Agostino, was unsuccessful in her attempt. She said it was a very difficult case to prosecute. You didn't have people who went in maliciously to do something. They went in to create a movie. They didn't go in to kill somebody. The last mention of Sonya Davis in the news was in a piece by The Guardian, where she was briefly mentioned in a testament to the dangers of stunt work, but no one followed up with her family on the civil suit. All things considered, it's hard to believe they weren't compensated a substantial amount of money, even if it didn't get all 10 million. Sapp said she wasn't really concerned with any money she may have been awarded if she did win the lawsuit. I hope that this is something that will make the industry Think about these people that do death-defying stunts and think about their safety. Things rarely go according to plan when it comes to the process of filmmaking, but a death taking place is something no one could ever anticipate or prepare for. Murphy moved on from Vampire in Brooklyn to The Net Professor, which was the beginning of his departure from R-rated comedies to more family-oriented films. Stunts are known for how dangerous they can get, which is why it's not recommended for actors to perform them. The case of Sonya Davis has become a mystery ever since the deadly incident occurred. We hope that justice was found in some way, shape, form for her family and her friends. Stay up to date with the latest news and comedy by subscribing here to our YouTube channel. Follow Comedy Hype across all social media platforms and look out for our original content on our new streaming platform at ComedyHype.com. For Comedy Hype News, I'm K-Rob.